White House Station, New Jersey, a quaint village surrounded by rich farmland. It's a popular place for New York commuters to live. Bill and Adele ran successful diners here for decades. We made with the previous businesses approximately a million dollars. I said, that's it, I'm retired, I'm done, I'm finished. Hey, Charlie. It was nice. When we retired, by the third day, I was bored. But in 2006, they came out of retirement to open their first fine dining restaurant with their daughter, Cheryl. Chop, chop! We love Florida. We love the tropical atmosphere. So I thought Florida hyphen mangoes for mangoes. They wanted to be kind of a um, high class restaurant. And it's hideous, hideous beyond belief. This restaurant is very poorly run. We know, we have big problems here. Adele doesn't respect us. Girls, we know! Adele tells him to shut up and she's actually cursed. Shut your mouth already, asshole! Hey. Adele is crazy. Go, go! All right, here I go. I do the steak, I do the raw bar. I do it all the maintenance. It's really hard. I get really upset when I see Bill having to overwork like that. This man should be retired. I think they said medium. Medium rare. Medium rare. The food here is fabulous. You haven't served that to him, are you? Yep. I've been a chef of flamingos for about four weeks. The food right now, it's less than mediocre. I definitely wish I could redesign the menu, but they don't want me to change anything. Ben? What do you want me to do? Flamengo's is doing lousy, and we don't know why. I can't sleep at night because I think of all the money we spent that would have been our retirement money. Taxes are coming up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see us out in the street almost. If this goes belly up, I could lose everything. How am I going to start over? I can't think of anyone else that could help us but Gordon Ramsay. I mean, he cuts right through the shit, and we are in deep shit. White House Station, New Jersey. Not exactly the New Jersey I know. Look at this place. I'm here to visit a restaurant called Flamingos. It's a long time before lunch, so I'm going to visit the family at home rather than go straight to the restaurant. Oh, the smell of manure is strong. Wow. That was a road and a half. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Chef Ramsay. Uh, Gordon, please. Good to I'm see good. you. Bill, yes? Bill, yes. Good to meet you, sir. How old are you? I am 70. You look great for 70. You know that. Thank you. Huh? And you're setting this up for a few years' time for retirement, or what? Well, I'm supposed to be retired now, but I bought a restaurant instead. <laughs> and now I'm broke. <laughs> you honestly came out I of came out of retirement. To open a restaurant. To open a restaurant. Oh, I had restaurants before. I had about four of them before. Uh -huh. And I made a lot of money with them. But this one is... I don't know what's the matter with it. I need Chef Ramsay's help to try to make this a successful restaurant for Cheryl and Adele. I'd like you to meet Chef Ramsay. How are you? Oh, Go on. Oh, nice to so see you, my darling. Oh, the big question for me is, you had a restaurant. Yes. Yeah, we started restaurant. diners. So then you sell them, you go into retirement. Right. Mm -hmm. Why would you come out of retirement to buy another restaurant? We wanted to do this as a family. Yeah. My daughter, Cheryl, and myself. Would you like to meet Cheryl? Please. Cheryl! Hello. Hello. Good to meet you. Good to Likewise, meet you as well. Is... Now, do you just pop over for a slice of cake? No, I live here. You live here? <laughs> yes. How old are you? I'm 42 years old. Same age as me. I left mum 24 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> what are you still doing here? I haven't had a paycheck in two years. I have to live home. My daughter, Cheryl, she's still living with us. But she doesn't bring anyone home. No guys. 
Forget that. OK. Should we get to the restaurant? Sure. Let me drive you there. Let's go on a little scenic route, yeah? All right. Yeah? yeah. Oh, <laughs> Let's go, Princess. OK. So, tell me, who came up with the word flamingos? No, it's flamingos. 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 Who? Flamingos. 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 It's flamingos. Not flamingos. Flamingos. FLA. FLA slash mangoes. Not flamingos. Not flamingos. Flamingos. Yeah, flamingos. Restaurant in New Jersey. Yeah, why not? Are you fucking crazy? There you are. Thank you so much for the lift. Wow. Florida mango. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. Oh, my God. It's like a zoo in here. Yeah, well, it is tropical. Who designed it? My daughter decorated it. Amazing. How drunk was she when she put the final sketches together? We do like the tropics. I don't see anything wrong in bringing tropical to White House Station. This is Jody. She's Jody. going to take care of you. OK, brilliant. OK. Thank you, Adele. Well, how do you start this one? It's endless. OK, um, let's start off with Ali Tuna okay. on the flaming tiki platter. A tiki? And then I'll end up with that tsunami on filet mignon. OK. Thank you. OK, it's for Chef Ramsay. All right. I think Chef Ramsay's mouth's going to drop to the floor when he sees a few of the things on the menu. Our tuna appetizer. Thank you. Enjoy. Is that always that hot in terms of spicing? They have a tendency to spice things up a bit. It's an embarrassment to tuna. Yes. I'll show to taste that other little end there. I will. Thank you, my darling. Brian, Cheryl, Chef Ramsay would like you guys to taste the tuna. It is really spicy. I've been saying this since I got here. I never had a problem. It doesn't matter if you love it or not. Everybody else, four times I've got complaints about being spicy. So he's, he's done with it. Ribs are destroyed. Sunday we made those. It's a week. Four days. Whatever, send it. Just send it out. Send it out. Wow. I see platters like that. I hear Hawaiian music. Oh, my God. So do we use that and start grilling away? Or... It, it's for looks. Thank you. Oh, mm. fuck me. What the fuck? Stuck. Are you trying to get the smoke detectors to come? No, I'm trying to get the thing off the top. Excuse me. Having a world-known chef spit out my food is not good. Tiki platter. Shitty platter. We need Bill ready to carve a play. Tell my father to put his, his black chef coat on. Yeah. Cheryl wants you to put your black chef coat on. Next, Philly Mignon. So I'm sort of looking forward to a really nice, classic piece of meat. Show you where it is. Strip down, baby. I'm not looking. I'm getting excited. <laughs> we have a flaming filet mignon that I serve tableside. People just love it. The chef's dream, filet mignon. Mm. Something simple, something classic. Something that's not normally served on a trolley. What the fuck? <laughs> what is that thing? These are roof tile. We're eating it from the tile. Yeah, I'm gonna finish it. It's still cooking. You'll love this. Yeah, you'll I love, love this. this. What's that in there? This is butter and garlic. Oh, garlic butter. Uh huh. It goes on top. And so the tsunami is the garlic butter running down the drain pipe. Right. <laughs> Watch out, all the stuff that can be out of the end. <laughs> wow. You enjoy that. Thank you very much. Quite welcome. Wow. <laughs> Me. Mm. That's the toughest. And the most chewiest filet mignon I've ever tasted in my entire life. The thing's so chewy. Is it chewy? The, the meat is so tough. Do you uh, want me to? Uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I finished it. Take this out of your yeah, way. Thank you. Okay. 
Chef Ramsay hated the food, he hated the decor, and I can't understand why. Less than impressed with lunch. Brian, Brian, good to meet you. Chef Ramsay is anxious to discuss Flamengo's eclectic cuisine with the head chef. How long have you been here? Um, about a month. What's it like cooking that food? Does it blow you away? Are you excited? No, it doesn't you... blow me away. I think it's all over the place. Straight up, would you eat it? No. No, but you have to serve it to me. When a new chef starts in a restaurant, he wants to put his imprint on the menu. Right, but they don't want change right now. Who doesn't want change? The owners. Right. Who That's writes the... the menus? We do. Why wouldn't you listen to your chef? It's frustrating for me, too, because, like I said, I've made the suggestions. I've said we need you to You sent it to me. You sent every fucking dish to me, and it was embarrassing. Well, no. That's not cooking. That's dog shit. We take pride in what we serve, and he just ripped it apart. It's awful. Chef Ramsay is already aware that the food is horrible, and the chef is really an unhappy cook. But before Gordon can even contemplate making changes, he needs to get the complete story by observing a dinner service. What name? Her. Her. All right, you can follow me. When the dinner starts coming in, just start throwing some asparagus on, put it on the side. The menu's large. The menu's a little all over the joint. It is. You know, really big. I don't have time to read all this. It's got a lot of things on it. Tonight's dinner service is busier than usual because Chef Ramsay is in town. You ready to order? And as customers order from this massive menu... I'll have the crispy green porch tilapia. Okay. Tickets are flying into the kitchen. Here we go. Calamari marinara. But the challenge to perfect such a huge variety of dishes is overwhelming for Chef Brian. I, I don't even know what to do. Absolute crazy, you know that? Yeah, huh? yeah. Got way too many tickets up there. You can't have 400 things on your menu. You just can't do it. I don't care who you are. Doesn't matter. We're absolutely buried over here. Buried. We don't even have these set up yet. Although Chef Brian is slammed in the kitchen. It's like, a, it's like a circus over here. The customers are not exactly sympathetic. Nice to see what's going on back there. We've been here since 65. Right now, I don't know if you want to go over here twice. No. They're ready to burst. Well, I can't do it. They're all waiting the well, you might same amount. Say something, you know? Like, we know. Shut your mouth already. Absolute crazy. Adele's attitude is completely toxic, and it trickles down from us to the patrons. It's 45 minutes into dinner service, and Brian has finally completed the first orders. I need his food out of the window right now. However, just as fast as dishes are rushed to the dining room, the are really small, and the risotto is very nice. They are quickly returned to the kitchen. Hey guys, the shrimps are just way too small. And she said the red rice, the risotto, is just bland. Oh my god. I've had it today already. I've had it. Why am I here? That's it. I'm taking a break. Fuck this. Right, two seconds. Bottom line, I mean, it was just about overwhelming. Disaster. Disaster. Major. It's the menu I was thrown into, and it's a disastrous menu. How can you get passionate about cooking something you hate? It's all over the place. It's uncookable. Right. I need to know that you're committed. I'm committed, committed to change. Yes. Because they have no clue. This restaurant turnaround cannot depend on them. It depends on you sticking with me. Is that clear? Absolutely. OK, thank you. Yep. Now that Chef Ramsay understands Brian's issues, they head back to the kitchen. Here I go. Meanwhile, Bill is ready to serve the tableside tsunami. I get tired real quick. But to help the business, I'll do whatever I have to do. Is that well done? No, it's me and Rare. If you just cut that a little bit, you'll see it's medium rare. All you have to do is cut it. No, but I mean cut it this way, because this was sitting on a hot tile. It's not medium rare. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, they got a 70 year old man going round and round the dining room. He shouldn't be doing this at this pace. Well, they're too, so cause they're too cheap to hire anybody else. What are you trying to do? Put the father in the grave? I mean, that's he's got one foot in there already. He didn't even want to do this. He didn't want, he wanted he to told retire. Me that. if that's what hurts. Yeah. Bill is overworked. I and mean, it's not fair. After a night where he witnessed a dejected chef, unhappy patrons, and an overworked older owner, Gordon knows he has to have a serious talk with the tough mother-daughter team of Adele and Cheryl. I wanted to talk to you both personally and express my concerns about Bill. I'm seriously worried about him in a big way. 
running around at the age of 70, pushing the cart. Why are you guys letting him do this? Well, he really doesn't work that much. You know what? It's always poor Bill. That's Bill's nickname, poor Bill. Why have you asked me to come here? Because I feel like I'm wasting my time. Because we don't know what the problem is. The service downstairs tonight, how was that? The kitchen, the kitchen was a, a disaster. Yeah. So you've employed the chef? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't been given chance to cook. He's cooking your menu. Right. Well, I, we never changed the menu since we opened. He never gets chance to show you what he can cook. Because we felt that our food was very good. Right. Are you stupid? I guess I am. You're accepting that it's perfect. I'm trying to tell you bluntly that it's not. Yet you never seem to accept your own mistakes. It's never your doing. We thought our food was good, but now you just, you know, said it's horrible. You cannot see a problem in your own establishment. No. I'm being honest. What I would like to see it's just a little bit more integrity with owning up to the responsibility to why this place is not working. There's no acceptance on your own mistakes. Good night. Jeff Ramsey realizes that the only way to begin to fix some of these problems is to do something these owners have never done, have a staff meeting. It's so important to clear the air. If anyone's got anything to say, please talk about it. I'll listen to anything. Doesn't mean I'm gonna agree to it. The menu needs to be simplified. Are you kidding? Cut it way back. People wanna come in here and cut off shorts and have a beer and a burger. Yeah, but you just started. I don't even know how you cook thoroughly yet. You've got to have the confidence and allow this man to step up to the mark. You need to be a little bit more entrusting on that and less nervous about letting go. I can't do my job if they don't let me do my job. OK, next question. I can't understand why the F you don't like me. Well. Isabel, you're an excellent server, but you don't freaking listen. But I know what I'm doing. I don't need to be constantly told the same thing over and over again. Isabel, please be quiet. Why would you think you have to tell me when I've been here you, for two years? You I know what the F I'm doing. Isabel, you don't know when to shut up. They don't want to hear opinions. We're still going to get treated like garbage. I don't think they're going to change. Centrally located, next to the train station, Flamangos has managed to push away its local customers. Today, Chef Ramsay begins his plan to bring them back. We're going to start making some changes. Yeah? I am afraid to make the change. Change number one. Let this man cook something that he wants to put on as a special tonight without any interruptions from you two. Second change. Bill, what is your favorite dish to cook? My meatloaf. When was the last time you cooked it? Eight years ago. Tonight you're going to cook that as well. Really? Chase, yes. I don't want you around there pushing the trolley out, running around like a blue ass life. <laughs> Both items will go on tonight as specials. My meatloaf that I've been making for years that I haven't made in a long time, it's going to be great to have it on the menu tonight. Your meatloaf. What are you seasoning it with? Fresh parsley and a little salt and pepper. I enjoy cooking a lot better than pushing the trolley around. <laughs> Brian, what are you doing? Chicken and shrimp jubilee, rosemary, gorgonzola, <laughs> brown sauce. Chef Ramsay definitely let me have free reign on creating my own special, and I wanted to prove it to the Bill and Adele that I can do it. I can handle the job. Brian, very nice. Dig in. That is so good. Mm. Thumbs up? Mm. Yeah, it's yes. Yes? Everybody happy? Yes. 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 I liked it, but I would never order meatloaf out. Never. I can't believe that Chef Ramsey wants meatloaf. Tonight, we can't have a disaster. So let's get set up, let's get prepped. We're opening up. Let's go, guys, yes? As Chef Brian and his team prepare specials for tonight's dinner service, 
no detail goes unnoticed by Chef Ramsay out in the dining room. What are those nails? What's going on there? What happened? Aren't they pretty? Pretty, they're pretty. fucking disgusting. Chef Ramsay asked her about her damn nails. Cheryl is the 80s. Are you high maintenance or what? Huh? Yeah. Seriously? But I work hard. Yeah, unfortunately, the wrong places. Hello. Hi. Follow me. All of our specials tonight are excellent. I'll have the okay, chicken jubilee. I'd like the meatloaf, please. Excellent choice. I think there's hope adding the specials, but will people like it? I don't really know. Right, I want to see you step up to the mark tonight, OK? So get on top of it from the outs. Yes, sir. Ordering three jubilee meatloaf chicken special. I'm on. Really big night tonight. More importantly, these specials have to work, but Brian has to come out of the kitchen and run it like a head chef because, unfortunately, the owners have employed him as a line cook. Tonight has to be his night. Three Jubilees picking up, one meatloaf. Many of the diners have ordered the specials. Chicken special. And that has had a positive impact on the kitchen. You're doing OK. You're doing beautiful. Brian is not spread too thin and is able to push out the food much more efficiently than last night. Go with this, please, please. And in the dining room, how is everything? Bad? Meatloaf and Chicken Jubilee specials are creating a buzz. Meatloaf out of this world. While the original menu is creating a slightly different kind of buzz. It's overcooked. It's overcooked. I'll bring the owner over, okay, to talk to you. Adele? Yeah. Table 31. The mahi is overdone. They want to speak with you. I'm a little busy, okay? I know you're busy. I'm letting you know that they're waiting. Tell them I will be out as in I did. Mean, that's what I did. Okay, so stop fucking me. I'm pretty fed up. I'm treated like almost stupid. Adele can be downright nasty and insulting. Okay, complaints. What are they? Okay. Mahi? It's dry. It's dry. It's dry. So you don't want it. Right, no, done. Okay. Bastard. I know when the customers come in, you have to, to be positive, but they're liars. God help us. I bet you've seen more shit in here than a muck spreader has in New Jersey for the last hundred years. See you later, my friend. He's killing me right here. I'm dying with the fuck sight. A lot of special left in the kitchen. Which helped a lot, but I was still discouraged with the old menu. It just got a little backed up. Oh, we missed the chicken penne. Get that going on the fly. I need a chicken breast working on the grill. The biggest panic in that kitchen there is trying to get your head around doing this menu. There's so many components in that menu that you're right. reaching for this or reaching for that, that everything's right. just so sporadic. Nothing right. streamlined. And that's why it's an absolute nightmare. I mean, a real nightmare. Bye. Thank you. Here's the good news. Chicken special, meatloaf, we're big hit. Now, the changes may have been subtle, but it wasn't enough. Nowhere near enough. In order for this to work, whether Adele or Cheryl likes it, this place needs to take a dramatic turn. In fact, the biggest turn has ever had since this place has opened. It's time to say goodbye to the tropics in the center of New Jersey. Everybody, stand up, grab a chair from the dining room, and follow me. Let's go. I was just wondering what's going on. Grab a chair, take two. Let's go. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. What's going to happen? Oh, hold on. No! What do you mean, no? That's I, Willie, my alligator. Trust me, I need him in the truck. I can't believe Chef Ramsay grabbed my alligator and just threw it in the truck. Just threw it in there. Oh, hey, easy with my oh, chair. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, the menus. Ah. Ah. I don't think it's funny. Watch if you want to keep your job. <laughs> right. Well, I want that alligator. They are not getting that. Cheryl and Adele are in complete denial about this place. Nobody wants this tacky tropical decor. They better not throw that stuff out. Or there's going to be a problem. Oh my God! What is going on? I want my alligator. Come over. I had a very good feeling that this is the beginning of the end of flamingos. Adele. The only way I know 
when I leave White House Station that the tropics I'm going to creep back in is to burn them. <laughs> gone are the menus, gone are the bamboo, gone are the crocodile, gone are the pineapples. The tropics are going. My greatest fear is to lose everything we work for. Three, two, one. The only way I know when I leave White House Station that the tropics I'm going to creep back in is to burn them. <laughs> the tropics are going. Three, two, one. Hold on, wait. Sorry, I forgot the most important thing. The sign. <laughs> Say goodbye to flamingos. I just can't tell you how happy I am to see that flamingo sign gone. Ready? I'm going to leave you to the expert. Thank you so much. Please do it quickly before they change their mind. Ah, look at that. Anyone for cooked alligators? Is a good one. It feels great to watch flamingos go up in fire. Adele may be upset that she's losing the traffic, but it wasn't working. It's hot as Florida here. <laughs> that is amazing. Wow. Is that right? I don't want you to be upset. Please. She is. Huh? You're going to make me cry. I am devastated right now. Change is difficult. It is. And sometimes it's hard to say goodbye to the past. You know that? It'll be all right, honey. It'll be fine. Yeah. It's just the tropics. The four walls are fine. We have faith in you. Uh, the past is gone. It will be for the better. But Adele needs to come around. Now, I have regrets. I don't know what's to come. So we'll see. It's all right, baby. After getting rid of the tropics, Gordon now moves ahead with his plan to transform flamingos. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Morning. Good morning. How are we? OK, nervous. I told him the change would not be subtle, and it's important you embrace change. That's not easy, but it's for the best. Ready? Ready. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye, Florida. No more mangoes. Welcome to the junction. <laughs> appropriate is that? Yes, the railroad tracks. Junction means trains, but junction also means coming together, which is what this community is going to do on a daily basis. They are going to come together at the junction. Oh, I love it. Adele, how does it sound? Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, takes me a while. It takes you a while. Yes. I'm not happy about the name. Come in. Welcome to the junction. <gasps> of this place. Oh. To open up this room was absolutely crucial. It looks twice the size. Oh, my god. The wow factor was everything. I can't believe the wall is gone. The tropics have gone. This restaurant was claustrophobic. It's much more open. Sand it down and distress the tables to match the chairs. The pineapples have gone. And more importantly, it's just lighting the whole place up. Look at the raw bar! There is no longer a raw bar. This is milkshake heaven. It's perfect. It's a lot more casual now. I'm very excited about the junction. Adele, what do you think? I don't like it. I don't like it. I hate blue. Unbelievable. I'm dumbfounded. I don't think I have ever heard anyone say they hate the color blue. I hate it. I hate it. How can you be positive about something you hate? Ugly. Don't want to throw up. I hate it. Hate, hate, hate. Oh, my God. The changes to what was once called flamangos has been dramatic. It's terrible. And Adele is finding it hard to accept any of them. I love what we had. That's all. 
And uh, this is a very drastic change. And I really don't like it. Think about your customers, because this is not for you to sit and enjoy. This is for you to run as a business. I regret it right now, but I want to see the menu, you know, and see how it's all going to come together. Adele. Thank wow. you. Now, this is trying to keep it in keeping with what's happening in the community. It's diverse, it's sophisticated, and more important, it's modern. How does that read for you? I mean, it, it's simple. There's a little bit of everything for everyone. Yeah. Burgers, meatloaf, we do a chicken. It's comfort food, but it's fancy comfort food. There's no other place around here like this. What do you think of the menu? I mean, this is very limited. Very limited menu. This menu is so limited, it's not going to be successful, and people are not going to come in with that small, small menu. I'm trying so hard to help here. Yeah. There's one thing I need to say to you, is that you cannot be personal about nostalgia that hasn't worked. And you have to embrace change. Because if you're not going to embrace change, do yourself a favor, shut the shop and retire. She has to get used to it, because this is what's going to bring people into this restaurant. And Adele's sitting, looking like she wants to throw herself in front of a train. After Chef Ryan spent the day learning the Junction's concise menu... That looks marvelous. Chef Ramsay introduces the staff to the new dishes. If you just have a look at the portion size, it's in keeping with the plate. This is a hallmark. Not just a burger, three different mini buffalo, meatloaf, and a turkey burger. The bigger portions, glazed salmon, a simple, delicious roast chicken. Who'd like a taste? Dig in. <laughs> dig in, dig in, dig in. Tell me, tell me someone moist. That's different. That's good. These salmon are so juicy. Oh, I my ate God. salmon. I love salmon. Oh. Tastes like a fish. Adele, how's the salmon, darling? Oh. The new menu is exactly what we needed. It's nice and simple, but Adele has a very hard time accepting change. This is their last chance to pull this place out. Just go with it. It's 30 minutes before the doors open to this new restaurant. You got your salad bowls? Yeah, I'm ready. Beautiful. And everyone is excited about the menu and decor. Everyone except Adele, who has hidden herself in the kitchen on the dessert station. What are you looking for? Crumb, apple crumb, but it's out. Joe, can you do desserts? Yes, sir. Here, give me, I'll take that. He's fine. He can do a dessert. All right. I need your smile. I'll be right out. I'm very nervous. It shouldn't be to my liking. It's to what the customers will want. I don't know if they're going to like this. <sighs> Good. First customer's here. I really want to go home. Did you just say you want to go home? Yes, I did. Right now, I don't feel my mother feels she has hope. The register has to start ringing for her to feel more confident, because I know she's mortified. As the restaurant starts to fill up with customers, Chef Ramsay inspires the kitchen staff for the big night. Right, right. You ready? Yes, sir. When I get an owner like that out there that tells me she wants to go home, tonight, I need you get even more in control to make this fucking thing work, yeah? Let's do it, yeah. I feel great about the new menu. This is a new beginning. Let's take it from there. This, the sky's the limit. All right, let's do this. This looks like a place to be fun to come to every day. Really? Thank you. It's open. It's um, inviting, right? You should hear what those people say. I know. Say. They love it. They love it, and uh, it's... This is more inviting to go to than it was before. Well, screw down. Well, screw them. They're the ones with the money. You gonna have the chicken jubilee? I'm gonna have the glazed salmon. Ribs? Okay. Chicken jubilee, lemon chicken. With the first orders in, the pressure shifts to Chef Brian, who must execute the Junction's new menu. We're gonna do a salmon and a jubilee next, so let's finish those. Don't Put the whole pan in the oven. Don't even sizzle a plate. Beautiful. 20's in the window. Cheers. All done. Thanks to Chef Ramsay's more focused menu, Brian is able to get orders out in a timely manner. Table 30 in the window. And more importantly, this is money. the customers are loving the food. It's really good. Who would have thought? You got fried dill pickle. It's not flavor. It's very moist. It's nice and very tasty. I like this. And it's, it's nice and bright. It's too bright. I don't like it. 
Oh. Now, where's the old bag? Where's Mum? <laughs> what? I just don't have the patience anymore for anything. Nice to see you. Where is Madam Grumpy? Where is she? Oh, here we are. He says it's going to work. How stupid can he be? Uh. Can I have a quick word with you? Two seconds. Wait. What's the matter? I'm very upset. I don't like this setup. The decor. You can make this work, only if you believe in it. Already, you don't believe in it. The negativity is going to rub off on your staff. Mm. It's going to rub off on your daughter. And the customers will be feeding you. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I need to get out of here. I have to be proud of what I'm doing. I am not proud of this. I would never run a restaurant like this. I want to go home. I would rather close the doors. It's opening night at the junction, and even though the customers are happy, Very well seasoned. Adele is miserable and ready to leave. I want to go home. Chef Ramsay is frustrated, and he knows the only way to get through to Adele is through her husband, Bill. Why is Adele so against it? Help me, please. She's that way. But she's our first point of contact. Yeah. If you could do me a favor and just ask her to put a smile on that face. OK, I, I will do that. Adele you can't hide her emotions. If she's mad, you're going to tell. And it's a struggle to get her to go in your direction. But I'm going to give her what I got. How you doing? OK? I'm scared. I'm so nervous. Don't be scared. Just keep smiling. Smile. Smile. There you go. My mother is a, a hard shell to crack. My father is great. He's talking to her, trying to make her feel better. Wonderful yeah. job. It was Good. delicious. Thank you. Good. I'm glad delicious. you enjoyed it. Uh, you like Bill's nice. meatloaf? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. I wanted to tell you how beautiful it is. You like it. I do. She is lighting up. Is she lighting up? <laughs> yes. I don't think I've got that long. It's got to happen before I'm 17. <laughs> I told you, she's a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't tell me on what scale of a pain in the ass she is. Oh, she's 11. Oh, 11. <laughs> Excellent. This is great. Oh, this good. Is wonderful. Thank you. It was a success. People love the food, and I feel that there's hope. Everybody's happy. It was very good. 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 I'm really glad you enjoyed. In spite of the dramatic changes, the staff rose to the occasion. Done. Done. And customers left happy. And now, even Adele appears to be coming around. First of all, I want to thank everybody for all their hard work, yeah? And a big thank you to the Queen. <laughs> I'm serious. Why? There were a lot of changes. Yes, it was scary, but she pulled it off. It's very hard to put the past behind me. I think the restaurant could be successful, but I don't know, only time will tell. When I first arrived, you'd lost touch with your customers in the community. Tonight, you reconnected in a big way. Tonight, the junction, even though the history is very short, it's only three hours old, is a success. But it's only the foundation, OK? You need to build on it together. Chef Ramsay definitely is giving us a second chance. And I'm just very anxious to be successful. And I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I will be back. And I'll take great pleasure in witnessing the success. And by the time I get back, madam, I want you moved out of that house. <laughs> yes? Promise me? I promise. OK, good. Well done. Seriously, well done. Yes? What I've learned from Chef Ramsay is change is good, and I'm up for it. Thank Take you. Take care. Can't wait to see you. you. And maybe I'll get some of the money back that I put into this place. Oh then I could retire. Right, good night. Good night. Yes? Good night. Good night. Big kiss. God, it's so nice to see you smiling like that. You know that. Well, I'm glad you enjoy New Jersey, at least this part of it. I'm thinking of moving here. Oh, my God. God help you. <laughs> What a week. We made some dramatic changes here. We changed the menu, we changed the decor, we even changed the name. That, honestly, was the easy part. The hardest part was changing Adele. She has to look forward, otherwise the history of the junction will be a short one. God, I'm a long way from home. Where is my train? Come on. 
In the days that followed, Adele slipped back to her old, stubborn self and started to redecorate the junction. The new concise menu, however, remains in place and is a hit in White House Station. We're doing meatloaf. I like that. That's good. Next. Nestled in the hills, 45 miles north of Los Angeles, is the idyllic town of Newbury Park. This is where only a year ago, a single mom named Laura was hoping to fulfill her dream by opening a restaurant called Mamaritas. My grandmother was always cooking, and I was always being, you know, brought in to help her cook, and I loved it. When she passed away, I said, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to open up a place, and I'm going to name it after my grandmother. Welcome to Mama Rita's. When I started the business, it was purely a takeout catering business. We built a really great reputation in a very short period of time. And before I knew it, I had customers that said, you need a restaurant. And based on my reputation and the fact that everybody wanted this, I went for it. All right, guys, we're open for business. Now I'm just adding a dining room, and I'm serving 200 people. I've served, you know, 1,000 people in a catering job. How could it be so hard? Colorado's really tender. Yeah, uh-huh. I cook for Mama Rita for six years. A lot of cheese, really nice with me. She's my right hand and my savior. I mean, she's family to me. Me much love for you. <laughs> Laura is not a good boss because there's not a lot of rules enforced and no one necessarily knowing what they're doing. The direction I get from Laura is a little hit and miss, and I don't really think Laura knows how to run her restaurant. I need a cocktail now. Laura, as a restaurant owner, is inexperienced because she never had any training in this business. This completely bands breaking new So was the catering business. But that was easier. It was small. This is huge. Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> when she opened this restaurant in the first week, really, really busy. After two, three weeks, no more. During the first month, we were just packed. The public, they want the best experience, the best service, the best food. Sorry about that. Call them out and send them a free dessert, please. And I didn't deliver it. And I'm begging people, please come back and give me another chance. And some say, no, I'll never go back there again. The debt that I've accrued with this business is astronomical. I'm on the foreclosure list, so there's a chance I could lose the house. If I didn't believe in this, I wouldn't put my heart, my soul, every single thing I've got into this. I believe it can be saved if I can fix what's wrong. Some of the best Mexican restaurants in the world are not actually from Mexico. They're here in Southern California. Now, this restaurant here has been open just 12 months. Sadly, it's only months away from closing. There's got to be something seriously wrong. It looks beautiful. Wow. How are you? I'm good, thank you. A pleasure to meet you. Likewise. Now, this is Mama... I am Maggie. I'm the mother of the owner. I thought you were Mama Rita. No. I'm, no. Uh, I'm Mama so, Rita's daughter. Mama Rita's daughter. Where is Mama Rita? Mamarita is uh, buried in the cemetery over the hill. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Not a problem. So Mamarita is your mother. Yes. And it's your daughter that is... Laura. Laura. I will take you to Laura. Excellent. Thank you, my darling. This will be my daughter, Laura. Oh, well, how are you? <laughs> Fine, nice Good to, to see you. Too. Can I just say, this place looks stunning. Thank you. My goodness me. Somebody spent a lot of money here. And you run the place? I run the place. I try. This is very different for me. Catering is, was my specialty. That's what I did before I opened the restaurant. Ah. And I did very well at catering. Top dish, what would you recommend? The homemade tamales. Oh, I love tamales. Well, good to see you. Good to see you. Time to eat. I'm starving. Excellent. This is my table. Thank you. Perla? Yes? When his order comes in, we'll let you know. And you need to be the one that cooks his food, OK? I think Chef Frenzy, he said, everything menus. It's good. How are you, sir? I'm amazing. How are you? And you are Brad. Brad, good to see you. How long have you been here? From the beginning. From the beginning. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how plush this place is. I know. It's like, don't judge a book by its cover, because you walk in here and you see this gorgeous place. But Mom Marita's doesn't live up to its expectations. If you can navigate me around, there's stuff to stay away from. Malotes. Mm. Taquitos. Ooh. Empanadas. De pollo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why would I stay away from them? Just because I just think they're really dry. Mm. I respect your honesty. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll bet that in my got it. 
Holy crap. That's really scary. Within five minutes, been in the restaurant and then told what to stay away from from the head waiter. Ay, ay, ay. Hot sauce. Thank you. Oh, this hello. is Cheryl. Hello. This is uh, my manager. And you manage the kitchen and the front of the house? Um, front of the house. Oh. And catering. And I do catering as well. What's wrong with the place? Lack of customers. So why have we got lacking customers? We need more customers. We need to figure out how to get more people in here. OK, thank you. And you're the manager? Yeah. Oh, my God. A manager that didn't know what's wrong with the restaurant is scary. OK. Look forward to catching you up. Not with the manager. Thank you. Jesus, the manager that doesn't know what's wrong. I don't know what answer he wanted. I mean, what was wrong with that? Lack of customers. Brilliant. That's a great insight, isn't it? Right, here we go. Let's start off with the tamale. Got it. The chimichanga? Yeah. Let's go for a burrito. I think that's enough for now. All righty. Thank you. Did anybody yeah. taste anything? Nice. Perla? Everything was good? Yeah, uh-huh. If Chef Ramsay doesn't like my grandmother's recipes, that concerns me. Anybody taste the tamales? This is the bueno. See what he thinks. Tamale is extremely hot. Right. Oh, no. God, I hope the tamales are moist. Jesus. It's like soaking wet newspaper. Gee. That is so dry. Goodness me, that's a fresh tamale. Well, when we make them, we make them in big batches, and then they're steamed, and then they're served, because we make such large volumes at a time. So you're sounding like the catering company now? Yes. And they go out like that? It's, they should be wet enough with the sauce inside that when you re-steam them, they stay moist. What an embarrassment. And this is your chef that ran a catering business? Correct. Jesus. OK. OK. Hates the tamales. Really? Perla? Hates them. He said it's so dry, it's inedible. He said it's embarrassing. Yeah, very dry. Are you cooking everything? Yeah. Perla, are you cooking the chimis? Uh-huh. I use the microwave for chimichangas for one minute before they fry. They taste really, really, really good. OK, chicken chimichangas. Ooh. Chimmy, 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 changa. It's dry. It's shards of dry chicken. And now what? Here's the thing. Honestly, chimmy, changa. Chimmy, chuck it in the bin. What a shame. Perla, he hates the chimmies. He didn't like them. I taste before. It's really good, the flavor. Not to him, apparently. I'm frustrated at my kitchen. But it's a bit of a punch to the gut about my food. Steak burrito. Look at that. That is gross. That has to be the biggest ad for any diaper anywhere in California. Oh, no. Oh, God. My God. Jesus. That's like eating wet cardboard. Have a taste of that, please. Bloody hell. The steak was gamey. It was kind of like a car wash, moist and mushy. Oh, my god. That is disgusting. Let me taste the steak. He says the steak tastes like shit. Did you grill him fresh steak for his burrito? Yeah. You didn't pull it from here, right? <laughs> Didn't we taste everything before we put it yeah. out? Ugh. It's really salty. Nobody tasted before we did this? <sighs> Damn it. When you have somebody come in that rips apart all of your food that, that I was proud of, it hurts a little bit. I'm so sorry. I'm not here to slag you off, however. I just want something fresh. After a lunch of disgusting dishes, Chef Ramsay has quickly realized why this beautiful restaurant is in an ugly situation. Come round, please. Thank you. So, this is... Perla? Perla. Sadly, the food is dry. It's like eating processed food. 
Is the food today the same that you serve when you have a catering event? Yeah. You've been serving that crap? Why don't you do it properly? Because everybody loved my catering. It's completely two different monsters. It's not going to work. Coming out of a catering business, trying to run a restaurant that cost how much? 1.5. 1.5 million dollars. Yes. Oh my god. And I'm 350 in the hole right now on top of that. So you're in for just under two million dollars. God bless your grandmother, but she must be turning over in her grave. After a miserable lunch. That is disgusting. An alarming post-mortem. You're in for just under two million dollars. Chef Ramsay decides he wants a better understanding of how this team of people work together in a dinner service. Tonight, I'm nervous that Chef Ramsay may not think that the restaurant is running efficiently. I really hope that the staff hold it together and that they shine. What can I get you to? You got it. And for you, sir? I'll take the uh, chicken. All right. I'll put that in for you guys. Thank you. I would say that the ticket times are not even five minutes for entrees. I cook really fast. Hey, food! Chile relleno, por favor. Is it normally coming out this fast? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yes. There we go. Rose con miscos. Chili relleno. There we go. Is that chicken taco? I'm not done with my soups. Tiene ramica. It's bigger than the drive through isn't it? Pretty much. There you go. With food flying out of the kitchen at an incredible pace. Three minutes. The kitchen staff now has time to socialize. Miguel, you want the de copetito y todo pa salir o qué? Mira. Have you cleared the board? All the tickets gone? Yeah. Wow, so just standing here for the next couple of minutes, I can't believe how fast the food comes out. It's like a conveyor belt. Is, Is that, that bad? It depends on quality. Okay. While the customers may appreciate the fast service, oh, here comes my shrimp. they are not appreciating the food. It's kind of dry. Dry? I mean, it's not like I went back. No, I know, obviously. Stop, stop, stop. The only thing that's missing here is a drive through I'm pissed. He's telling me that all my food is shit. It's very frustrating when I don't know how to do it another way, because this is all that I know. That is unbelievable. This has to be the fastest serving restaurant in America tonight. But it's not really a restaurant. It's a fast food factory. What a joke. On the heels of a ridiculously fast dinner service, bye-bye. Chef Ramsay suspects that shortcuts are being taken in the kitchen. Wow, fast, man. Huh? So it's time for a little investigation. What are those? Tamales. Oh, the tamales. Yeah. They're the frozen. Ah. So these are your chimichangas. Are they frozen as well? Yeah, frozen. Wow. When was all this made? Two months. Oh, my God. Can you get me Laura, please? Yes, yes, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. What? Come round, come round. Don't run, not in the kitchen. Here's the thing. You're serving chicken that was cooked nearly two months ago. You're frosting it and then reheating it. And are you wondering why it's dry? Were you aware of this or? This is what we did for catering. Unbelievable. That may be why the place is struggling. Where are the freezers? Freezers there. Oh, my God. Tortillas. I hope everything's right in there, the shelving and all the food. Oh, my God. You're joking, aren't you? Look at all this stuff here. Bloody hell. This is unbelievable. Look at that. This is what we did for catering. You must have hundreds of portions of stock here. He just kept grabbing and grabbing and stacking my arms with it. All this pre-cooked pre-rolled, frozen, then defrosted. It's just absolutely appalling. This is not a restaurant. You are mad. I've got to wash my hands. Fucking stink. I have a man back there tripping everything apart, telling me, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. When somebody takes something that you have and butchers it, it hurts. A 
shocking discovery at dinner service. Look at that. You must have hundreds of portions of stock. Confirms to Chef Ramsay that problems at this restaurant are bigger than he anticipated. What a day. Lunch was disappointing. Dinner was shocking. It started off with defrost and serve, followed by defrost and serve, followed by defrost and serve. You're running a factory. It's mass produced. Treating food like a processing plant. Perla, is that quality what you cook? Mm. Did you honestly think that serving defrosted food slopped out was going to make you a success? I did well at catering with it. You have driven away more customers than you could ever imagine. Can I just have a word with Laura? Thank you. Sit down. I am... Um, I'm worried. I don't get your level of commitment to make this place work. I, I never pretended to know how to run a restaurant. You're smart, but you're not being smart. Apparently not. This food is sinking you faster than you fucking know it. I don't want to lose this. I want to figure out a way to fix it and make it great. But you really have to start taking responsibility for what you're doing. The difference in running a catering outlet to running a wonderful restaurant is night and day. And the quicker you get that through, your head will be the start of the change. OK. I'm really sorry. I am too. I've gone for something that I maybe shouldn't have gone for. And now I'm here. And I have to figure out a way to save it and fix it. I'm scared. Very scared. God. <sighs> Thinking about what happened last night, Laura, she's not stupid. She's more scared, almost petrified. So in order for me to help her to get over that fear of change, I'm going to take the first step for her. And there's only one way of doing this. Goodbye, Frozen. Look at that shit. Oh, my God, what the state of that. A year old. There's enough of chimichangas here to last me a lifetime. Goodbye, catering. Hello, restaurant. Chef Ramsay has found over $12,000 worth of frozen food in the freezer. Hello, Laura. Good morning. How are you both? Fine, thank you. Now it's time to confront the owner and the chef with his findings. Today's about change. Yes. Uh, go and have a quick look around the kitchen. You'll see some adjustments. So far, all looks the same. I was shocked. Everything was gone. My freezer was empty. My walk-in refrigerator was empty. I had no idea what was happening. Oh, my god. To show the enormity of the amount of frozen food, oh. Gordon has not only removed it from the freezer, but has left it on display in the restaurant. I was completely floored. I had just the sinking feeling in my stomach. Look at this shit. What's going on there? <laughs> oh, they've gone green. Jesus. Look, he's got his Mexican sombrero on. <laughs> Rice. Chimichangas. Five dozen. Ten dozen. Twelve dozen. Ouch. And this isn't a catering business? I didn't know it was this bad last night. Here's what concerns me more than anything. These are from last year. August and July. Last year? What the fuck's going on? I'm shocked. I can see why. Have a good look. I'm gonna wash my hands. It fucking stinks. I guess I should be on Pearl of more to make sure that the structure is there and that things are being handled the way that they should. But then again, I own the restaurant, so everything comes back to be my responsibility. This has made me feel quite ignorant.
Today, Chef Ramsay is hitting the streets, trying to gather former customers of this young restaurant. He's hoping that they will hammer home to Laura what this community expects from Mama Rita's. Nice. What is this? Who are all these people? Chef Ramsay knows that often the best way to get his point across is through the voices of others. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, good afternoon. I was pretty shocked to see all these people show up. I really didn't know what to expect. Thank you so much for coming. It means a lot for you guys to make an effort to be here. These are ex-customers that were here at the beginning to support this restaurant. It's important that we understand what went wrong when we had the chance to open this restaurant. Please find out what happened. I'd like to start. OK. Over the time, we felt we weren't getting the service that we wanted, and the creativity of the food was really lacking. Um, on two different trips, I got sick within like a two-month period. And when I came here two months later, I got sick again, and I kind of stayed away. Defrosting food. The whole table kind of got stomach issues afterwards. Ouch. <laughs> I guess I underestimated the palate of the common person. Some of the items we freeze, and as we've been going through, we're thinking that that's probably what it is, and we're not going to freeze anymore. So hopefully that will take care of that issue, and that's what we're changing. Thank you for being so honest. I can vouch for Laura. Frozen has gone. Yes? Yeah. I can't wait to see you again, but next time it's going to be inside the restaurant rather than outside. Thank you so much. Right, we've got work to do. That's an eye-opener. Today, speaking to all those people, I realized people know good food. I respect that, and that's what I want to give them. To make the transition from cooking frozen to fresh, Chef Ramsay has just the challenge in mind to inspire Laura and her chef, Perla. Chicken, shrimp, I've got steak here. 30 minutes. Having a bit of a cook-off now. Choose between the shrimp or the chicken and cook something really delicious. One minute gone. Let's go. It felt good working with fresh ingredients. It was fun to just grab something and just throw it all together and come up with something good. Let me think, let me think. What's the matter? I'm thinking. You're thinking? I'm really nervous because I do not have idea for what I cook. 15 minutes left. Ay, ay, ay. Perla, get moving. I was nervous about what she was making. No pressure, Perla. The creativity seems not to be present. Five minutes, we're ready to play, yeah? Yep. Ready? Let's go. Uh, all right, let's go. Chef Ramsay not only wants the staff to taste the difference between frozen and fresh, not a single item on the plate defrosted anywhere. He's also looking for the staff to choose which of the three dishes goes on tonight's menu. OK, what is it? They are blackened shrimp tacos. That looks good. Darling, what is it? Garlic breast. Garlic breast with? Garlic and salt. Garlic and salt put on the chicken breast. She just said garlic salt, and that's it. It wasn't very creative, and um, that scares me. OK, we've got a flour and steak, beautifully marinated. Mango salsa served on a little bit of pickled vegetables. Finished with uh, avocado butter. Yum. OK, let's go. Take a taste. Oh, it's so good. It was amazing to taste Chef Ramsay's dish. You could tell it was going to taste good just by looking at it. How do you, Robert, what do you think oh, of the shrimp? Really good. <laughs> How's okay. the chicken? Perla's dish had no flavor. It's yeah. like a little bland. It needs something to spice it up. OK, good. Which dish goes on the menu? The mango salsa. Shrimp is really good. So both the shrimp and the flour and steak are special tonight. I'm disappointed in Perla, given her opportunity to try to shine. Unfortunately, I think it fell a bit short. For tonight's dinner service, Chef Ramsay has insisted on using only fresh ingredients. So for the first time, Mama Rita's, led by Laura and Chef Perla, will operate like a restaurant and not a catering service. Hello. Good to see you guys. Thank you. You enjoy now. Just letting you know, our specials are skirt steak with mango salsa and blackened shrimp tacos. The steak special? OK. We're cooking everything fresh now, so enjoy your meal. Jeff, you have anywhere special you want me? Just doing my thing? Uh, yeah, as normal. Running as normal. How's the uh, specials going? 
specials are going good. You're gonna have some of those steaks coming up now. I've yep. been pushing it, and so it's coming. I'm scared about tonight. Cooking everything fresh like this, it, it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like something she's never done. And Pearl has got to get into a whole new mindset. El pollo and ahí chicken taco no se ha puesto. Perla's team has quickly produced the first set of specials. This is 24, yeah? Gracias. All right, I got your chef's specials. And it appears as though the kitchen has adapted well. But have they really? You guys good? Was everything OK? It's rare. I'll take it back. Cut you into yours. Well, you know what? Too rare. What's the matter? It's rare. Guys, you got to cook the steak. Look it. It is raw. Look at that. No, this is a medium rare, eh? This isn't medium rare anyway. That is rare. Perla, I want you overseeing the entrees, making sure the steaks are cooked properly, and you shouldn't be doing this little stuff. You are the chef. Finally, a voice. Give me an apron. I have people back there that don't know what they're doing, so obviously I need to be more hands-on in the kitchen. The specials are going, you guys. Leave those items out so we can use them and get to them easier. I need these washed immediately. They're very muy caliente. Maria, you're making me those churros? Yeah. Rapido, please. Have the refires gone out? Is my redo? Where's my... Did the other one go out yet? Why'd you take... Why'd we take one without the other? <sighs> That's incredible. On the back of all this negativity, I finally think the pennies drop with Laura. All of a sudden, she's found a voice, and she's treating this service like it's her last. Did you get one of them yet? One? Fuck. Here you go. Let me get that one to Laura. Thank you. OK, here's another steak up. I need you guys to keep up on this. I shouldn't be back here doing this for you. Right, Laura, let them do it now. Let them do it now, yeah? Laura has shown that she is willing to step in to do whatever it takes to help her restaurant. But now Chef Ramsay is looking for Perla to do what she is paid to do, run the kitchen. Perla, I need you to step up the mark now, please. You need to take control. You want me to decorate the plates? No, 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 let them do it. Look how many staff there are I, behind there. I know, but I... They were falling all over themselves in the kitchen, and there were a lot of them on the line. This is incredible. Laura, that's prepared to go to Helen back to make sure this restaurant survives. However, I don't get the same feeling from a staff. I don't think they actually give a damn. Unbelievable. It's totally raw. It's raw? It's raw. You better send it back. Sure. You can get the waiter to come here. This her fish is raw. Fish is raw. What? For God's yeah. sake, guys! No! That's, I, there's no excuse. I mean, I, I... It's like fish out of a fucking sushi bar. Come on, guys. If I don't do something immediately, it's going to be gone tomorrow. I just hope we can do it. we got to be able to do it. And if we don't do it, it's not going to work. Tonight's difficult transition from cooking frozen to fresh only confirmed what Chef Ramsay was already feeling, a lack of confidence. Tonight didn't exactly go to plan, did it? No, it did not. Perla is not a head chef. I think tonight confirmed that. Surely you must see that. I, I, I don't know what to do with that. Perla's family to me. She's not an employee that I can just cut you know, after so many years of being by my side. There was one strong asset, quite refreshing. And that was you. I felt like this was your last service. You were almost fighting for your life, fighting to stay open, fighting for every customer, every dollar. And you cared like I've never seen you care before. It was the first time that I actually really started to believe that you've got what it takes to turn this place around. We're not going back. Tomorrow, we are relaunching this restaurant as a restaurant for the first time in this town. Thank you. Come here. Thank you so much for everything. Get some sleep, OK? It was great for Gordon to sit with me and feel that somebody has some faith in me. I'm an absolute fighter, and I tell you, this is the fight of my life. Gordon is looking to revive Laura's spirits and avoid a repeat of last night's service. So he's come up with a surprise solution for the crippling problem in the kitchen. Come in, please. All right. Now, here's the big change. A humongous change. Hang on a second, I've got to get it. This is Naris. Hi, Naris. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. How are now, you? 
This lady has been with me four years. She's an amazing chef, obsessed with Mexican cuisine, and I am giving her to you as a gift. What she is going to do is install a proper service in this restaurant. She's going to consult properly for the first time since you've opened this place. I would just like to say that I'm really, really excited. Your restaurant is beautiful. Thank you. We're going to make your kitchen beautiful. We're going to make your food you. beautiful. Thank you. It's going to be great. Thank you I'm so much. I'm excited. Nice. One hell of a talented chef, and I mean that. Right. Thank you. Thank you, my darling. God. I can't believe it. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. She's going to teach Perla so much. For the first time in a long time, I have some hope. And I, uh, I think we're going to get through this. Gordon is hoping chef consultant Norris will get the kitchen in order. But there's another huge change tonight, the menu. First of all, look at the colors. It's like a rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> it's fresh, seasonal, and it is incredibly authentic. Taco salad. Oh, that looks yes. good. Carnitas, slowly braised. Mm. Yeah. The sizzling fajitas. That is going to be piping hot. Please be careful. Have a taste. Mm. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Mm. The flavor. Ooh, that shrimp is good. The new menu is awesome. My mother would be so proud of right now. We're all so excited about tonight. Mama Rita's facing its biggest night ever. Chef Ramsay is willing to give Perla one more chance to command the kitchen. But this time, he has installed a safety valve, and her name is Narice. Right, uh, Perla. Yes. Tonight, we really have to show that you can adapt to cooking in a restaurant, and there's a big difference. Narice is here to help you, but she can't do everything. So show some spirit to try and get this place back up to where it should have opened nine months ago, yeah? Excellent. Good luck. How can we not have a successful night? I mean, I've got one of Gordon's chefs to work in the kitchen, and I think Perla will do all right. Hello. What's the menu under? Gun. OK, come with me. There you go. This is our new menu. Everything's fresher now. We're kind of revamping everything. Let's just start off with the order of guacamole. Guacamole to start? Stick to this. I will uh, put that order in, and it should be up shortly. Call out the order. Appetizer chicken taquitos, Miguel. So make sure you mark them, okay? Start marking appetizer. Dinner. Carla. Yes? I'm, I need you to set me up a fish taco, okay? Carla, are you ready for the tacos? Carla, listen to me, please. Let's get 34 out, or whatever that is. I please need set me up fish tacos. Set me up the plate so I can just pay, put the fish on there, please. Please. Maurice, I need to pick up 34, yes? Yeah, I have it. I just need the plate set up. Right, Maurice. Yes, Chef. There's four of them standing watching you do everything, and no one's doing anything else. You've got to pick it up, Perla. Perla, are you ready for the tacos? No, not ready. Can you believe that? Cheryl. So you just walk right past that table and everything's empty on there. You can't clear away or do you want me to do it for you? This one? Yeah, it's empty. You guys all done here? It's 20 minutes into dinner service. Perla, pull your tickets. Don't let him hang like that. And already Perla is struggling to organize the kitchen and her staff. I've never yeah. seen so many people standing still behind the line. What are we waiting on? Firing the orders or not? Yes, yeah, chef. Perla, I need to start firing tickets now. Please? Um, la sisa se fue. What's unfolding in my eyes is fascinating. I'm just trying to get it set yes. like a normal restaurant, yes. not like a canteen where they're serving it en masse. Perla was still in a catering mindset, and with the cooking fresh and cooking to order, it's obvious she didn't know how to do that and make it happen. I wish they would come with our food already. Perla is clearly being exposed for her lack of leadership, and the kitchen is slowly sinking. Perla, we need to get organized. This is not, this is not working. But finally, an hour into dinner service, appetizers are leaving the kitchen. Can we change it up? There's burnt chips and not enough cheese. OK. Yeah. All right, I'll go ahead and send this back for you guys. Perla, let's focus. OK, we got to focus. What's the deal with 33? All right. Burnt chips, no beans, and not enough cheese. Fuck's sake. Guys. Refire, some more cheese on there, but no, don't burn the chips, yeah? Sorry. This is the difference between just taking stuff out of a fridge and dipping it in a fryer that got fried this morning or trying to cook it fresh. On top of the three pieces of steak they give me, they give it to me raw. <laughs> Send it back. What's right. wrong with that? 
What a fucking disaster. It's incredible. You have the most amazing looking restaurant and a great tasting menu, but if you haven't got the right staff to put it off, you're screwed. Carla, take your tickets. Talk to me. What, what tables have gone out? From the first ticket. Carla was completely absent. Carla, yes. Please put numbers on them. I'm not running the table. I don't know what's going on. I had to turn my head a hundred times to say, Perla, what's next? Call it out. What are we doing? Perla, talk to me. You gotta talk to us. You can't, we're not, we're not psychic okay. here. Perla realized the ticket times and started feeling the pressure. She fell apart. Perla, take control. She's not equipped to work a line. There's not one ounce of line material in that woman. Perla. 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 It's relaunch night at Mama Rita's. Perla has shut down, and the kitchen is at a standstill. Laura. Yes. Two seconds. I couldn't have made it any easier for her. It's clear now she's not making the transition from a line fucking processed frozen defrosted crap to cooking fresh. That is not head chef material. We're not looking for a super duper fine dining chef. I'm just looking for a cook that can cook from fucking start to finish. Tonight has been obvious. Yes, but can I will make a comment. I have I have a woman that is, has stuck with me through right. thick and thin for six years. OK, my big right. question to you. Yes. Are you her boss or are you her friend? I am her boss. And Rob, you're her friend. It would break my heart to not have Perla as my head chef. But right now, I have to stand back and really look at what's best for my business. Who shut off? Who has? Perla. OK, look at me. Narice, take over the line, yes? You, outside, five minutes, get some fresh. Take her outside. Let's go. Unbelievable. It's OK. It's OK. Look at me. It's OK. I'm scared, too. I'm scared, and it's hard, OK? I'm frightened of all hell right now. I've got to try to pull this off with the staff that I've got and this new way of cooking. It's OK. It'll be OK. I promise you it'll be OK. One mahi mahi. Coming in 30 seconds. With Perla off the line and the Reese in control. Get some lime on here, please, and finish these for me. Mama Rita's kitchen is finally on track. Two mahi tacos up, piping hot. Here are the fish tacos. Can I have a ramekin, please? Technically, I wasn't supposed to be on the line. I was just supposed to supervise, but I can't watch them go down. Good job. Now keep it up. Let's finish tonight. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Carnitas. You got the mahi? Um, you can do it. Just focus. Chef Ramsay's plan and Narisa's rescue of the kitchen has resulted in customers being satisfied. This is one you want to keep. You like the new Riano? Yeah, yeah. And the relaunch ends on a positive note. Without Norris, we wouldn't have been able to get through tonight. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. You guys, clean up a little. She knows her stuff. I mean, she's clearly a great chef. While the relaunch was a success, unfortunately, no one is in the mood for celebrating. Certainly not Perla. And definitely not Chef Ramsay. Tonight was made more difficult than it ever had to be. Perla's not a leader. She's never going to step up to the mark of a head chef, ever. But it's not rocket science. I know. No, Reese. Over the next two weeks, I want you to separate the brigade, focus on the strengths, the weaknesses. OK, thank you. Thank you so much. That'll be good. Wonderful. Perla's strength isn't being a chef. And this whole scenario has brought that to light. And now it's blaringly clear that I need to do something about it. Laura. The future success of this restaurant is in your hands. If you don't extract out of her everything she knows about cooking, you're mad. It will never, ever work if you step backwards to your old ways. I won't do that again. Well, I'm going to run it like a restaurant. Good. Next time you come, you're going to see some staff changes. Promise me? I, 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 I give you my word. Come here. Stand strong and good luck. I've got one hell of a headache. Did we honestly take a caterer and turn her into a restaurateur? That question will only be answered when she finally decides on what to do with Perla and her kitchen team. What a nightmare. Holy Jimmy Changers. After Gordon left, Laura worked with Narice to organize the kitchen and the staff into a fully functioning restaurant. Once the system is implemented, I think that will make it much, much smoother. That makes yeah. sense. And after two weeks, Laura finally made the staff change she promised Chef Ramsay. 
she installed a new head chef, moving Perla out of the kitchen and back to catering. Moving forward now, there's definitely going to be a split between my catering and the restaurant. They are going to be two different businesses. Well, guys, thanks for coming in. I don't okay. think my eyes were open, and they haven't been open for a very long time. And it took Gordon to come in here and whack, 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 to get me to open them.